I did a previous video on etiquette and an overview of why I think etiquette matters and why the loss of etiquette in our society today is a really unfortunate thing. And I did have some comments from people that had asked me to do more on this topic and to get into some specifics. So what I'm going to do here is just a very basic etiquette guide. This is you know proper etiquette for how it is that you eat a meal. Uh, and why are we starting with with food? Well, a lot of times when you think about etiquette, you do tend to think about food. You know which fork you use when and where those things go. Um, and there is a reason for that because when we're speaking about etiquette, we're talking about cultural ritual, a cultural liturgy the the standards and rules and rights around how it is that you interact with other people while you are eating. And the reason why this is so connected, I think, to eating in people's minds is because food has always been, as long as the human species has existed, a very significant part of socializing. And one of the unfortunate realities that we are facing as a result of our overly individualistic, very inward centered culture that we're in is that we no longer look at food as something that is communal, that brings us outside of ourselves into the fellowship of people around us. And we see that in the way that people just eat with their families, if they eat with their families at all. So and this is something that became much more common toward the end of the 20th century, that people eat in front of the television. You know, you get your your uh, little tray table out on the couch and put on a show and you eat your TV dinner uh, while you know, everybody's kind of doing their, their own thing. And maybe not so much that anymore, uh, but probably this happens more with people on their phones. Or we just are so busy in our society that we eat on the go with the rise of fast food. We're no longer thinking about food as just a part of our daily schedule that we need to sit down with our family or we need to sit down with our with our friends or our community or whatever to actually sit down and ritually come together to to break bread with one another we're just so focused on productivity or whatever it is that we're doing that we just kind of grab food as an afterthought go through a drive through and shove it in our face as fast as we possibly can now, obviously, we're all going to have times in our lives where we are so busy that there is no other option than, than to do that. Uh, I had one of those days yesterday when I went from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting the entire day, and it wasn't done until about 11 o'clock at night, and my wife brought me a Whopper. So uh, I'm not, you know, not going to say that I never do that. Um, but those should be exceptions, right? Those shouldn't be the rule. We should try and strive to spend time with others you know, while we're eating, whether it's your family or community, and to, to kind of recapture what is a necessary social ritual, just a part of communal life together that we eat with one another. This is why in the church we celebrate uh, Holy Communion. Do it together, not by yourself, but you do it with the broader community and you fellowship with God and one another through the gifts of, of Holy Communion. So we have this in all different aspects and parts of, of our lives. And every society, really since the history of the beginning of the history of the world, has had social rituals surrounding food and what the proper way to eat is. Uh, you see, uh, for example, in many European countries, it is much more common to have a much longer meal, to actually sit for a number of hours. We tend to be very rushed. We tend to eat very quickly and then move on. Um, and maybe some of this is because I'm from the northeastern United States. You know, I live in New York, and everybody in the northeast is very fast-faced all the time. We're, we're always jumping from one thing to another. I feel like we can't take any time to take a break, <laughs> which is probably not, not healthy or, or good for us in, in many ways. Uh, so then, I want to move from there into talking about how what are some of these rituals that go on when when we eat. So that's kind of getting across where I think we've, we've gone wrong. Um, and I want to say that as we talk about these things, there, there's something that really is going to stand at the center of, of etiquette. Uh, I guess two things that will stand at the center of rules of etiquette that are, I think, really essential to understand the why we do these things, because we can think of them as just kind of strict rules for no reason. And the first thing is etiquette restrains us. These things restrain us from just doing whatever we feel like doing. Uh, we, we tend to 
prize liberty in our culture and freedom as doing whatever we please. We, I feel like doing this, so I'm going to do it. I feel like eating this thing now, so I'm going to do it. We don't really think about self-control. But etiquette puts some restraints on us that stops us from just kind of indulging in whatever we feel like. We're talking about whatever we, we want or being coarse at the dinner table just because who cares, uh, you know, be, because we just feel like doing it. So it puts helpful restraints on, on us and stops us from just doing whatever it is that we want. And that's good for us. We, we do well in, within limits. We're created to have various limits in, in different ways, especially socially um, and certainly morally. <laughs> uh, but we're talking here about social things, not necessarily things that are uh, you know moral imperatives. Um, but the second thing is that etiquette always gets us to focus on somebody else. The purpose of a lot of rules of etiquette is to take us outside of ourselves and to look at the social atmosphere, and not just be thinking about what can I get out of this situation, but instead looking at others and say, how can I do what's best for the people that I'm with? Even if it's in some kind of simple thing like eating a meal. So let's talk about some of those those social rules surrounding surrounding eating. Um, now, maybe the first and kind of most, most obvious thing that we can start with is when do you start eating? <laughs> okay, so and, and we can talk about eating in various social contexts, and they all have different particular rules. Whether it's a dinner party, or you're at a restaurant, or you're just you're just at home with your family. But this rule should apply no matter what people you're with, and many of these rules do. But depending on the formality of the occasion and the, the nature of the guests around you, this this can change. Um, but when do you start eating? Well, generally, the one who is the host or hostess gives per, either gives permission that you can now begin eating or you wait for them to begin eating. So you, you kind of wait for a social cue. You know, everybody's getting their food. You don't just start to dig in as soon as you get food because you're really hungry and you've been served. Instead, you wait for everyone else to get their food and then you start to eating when everyone else gets their food. Generally, what you're gonna wanna do is watch the host or hostess when they pick up their fork and ready to eat, you pick up your fork and now you're ready to eat as well. And, you know, again, there's a, there's a purpose in this is that you are not just focused on you and your appetites so that as soon as you see yummy food in front of you, you shove your face in it and just eat it as, as quickly as you possibly can because you're hungry. No, you're recognizing this is a communal experience. We can actually, I can wait a little bit before I start my meal. Uh, sometimes you'll get permission to be able to eat earlier. You know, if you have a very large party. Uh, so say, you know, at, at a wedding reception, you have a lot of people, tables are, are served, you know, one at a time, you're going to get permission to begin eating at at some point. So as long as you've kind of gotten permission, or if you're in, in a kind of setting where you have multiple tables, you're serving yourself, you know, generally let everyone else kind of go get food. Once you sit at the table, others start eating, then you start eating, but you don't just jump into it um, right away just to kind of feed your, your base appetites. <laughs> uh, okay, so there's there's kind of first general rule. If, if you're a man and you're taking a woman out to eat uh, at a nice restaurant, pull a chair out for her and let her sit down, but help her. You don't just kind of walk over and sit down and let her pull her stuff out, you know, especially if she has a bag or coat, you know, offer to help her with those things. Again, it's getting you outside of yourself and getting you outside of what you want to do and actually, uh, you know, communicating uh, with with the other person. If, if you are at a dinner party and you are seated next to someone that you don't know, I mean, this, this kind of thing happens all the time when you're with for whatever reason, socializing with people that that you don't you don't really know, um, you have to think about what you want to do to start a conversation. Now, first of all, if you have somebody on this, you know, your your left and right side, it is appropriate that you actually communicate with both with both people. Generally, if you are seated next to somebody, you have a conversation with the person next to you. You don't shout across the table or shout to the end of the table because you feel like talking to somebody else. Uh, notice. Who is next to you? Introduce yourself. Don't ignore somebody. You know, if you're in a group of people and you see somebody that nobody's really talking to, or they're just kind of isolated, make sure that you make conversation with them. Now, some older etiquette books will tell you that between courses, you know, you basically switch. You talk to the person on your right in, during one course of the meal, and then you talk to the person on your left during the other course of the meal. You don't have to be that strict or, or rigid about it, and that can make your conversation kind of awkward. But just make sure that you are actually communicating with the people next to you and get them involved in, in conversation so people don't feel like they are left out. Now, as you're talking to somebody at a, at a party, you 
you also have to think about what it is that you say to them. Now, people have a tendency to talk on and on and on about themselves. That's the first tendency that people have. And I'll tell you, most people, when they meet you, do not really want to hear about you. <laughs> they, they don't want to hear you go on and on about whatever you know stories you think you have that may be interesting or hear you brag about how much money you make or whatever, you know, how big of a following on social media you have, whatever thing it, it might be. Uh, because you're giving the impression to the other person as soon as you communicate that you just want to talk at them and you don't want to talk to them. Uh, this is something that I hear so often from women talking about going on a date with a man uh, where they say, yeah, the guy didn't ask me one single question about myself. He just talked the entire time. And so, man, if you're taking a woman out, think about what you're saying. Think about how you're communicating. And the most essential thing is to ask about the other person and listen. So when you meet somebody, ask questions about them. Ask, you know, about their, their interests. Now, sometimes it, it tends to be the case that when you meet somebody, the first thing you say is, well, you know, what do you, what do, you do for a living? That tends to be where people go. Uh, but generally, you know, etiquette manuals are going to tell you not to ask that question first. Sometimes we use that question as a way of kind of social stratification, or we, we use it as a way to determine whether or not we're making more money than the other person. It can often come across this way. So we say things like, well, what do you do for a living? And the other person says that they do something that, you know, maybe makes less money than you say, well, I'm a lawyer. You know, it, 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 there are social dynamics that go beyond just who you are at person to person when you ask somebody what, uh, what they do for work. So don't generally start with those kinds of questions. Now, naturally, question that, you know, talk about work is probably going to come up at some point because it's what you're interested in, what you do. But ask a little bit more general questions about what, you know, what people are interested in, what they, what they enjoy, because people are, are more than uh, than their jobs. And certainly don't ask people how much money they make. <laughs> Despite what TikTok videos of people running around in New York City asking people may tell you, do not ask people how much money they make. It's, it's, a, it's completely inappropriate and rude. Uh, but most importantly, begin your conversation with asking questions. And then hopefully they'll ask you questions as well. But if you're trying to make a social connection, the way to make a best impression on some, the best impression on somebody else is just to talk to them and ask them about themselves. And this is the way everybody is. We want to feel like people value us and care, care about us. So you're going to do well socially in life if you just ask a lot of questions. And I'll tell you guys, in your dating life, this is going to be pretty significant. If you are on a date with a woman and you just ask a lot of questions about her. And, and, and listen, by the way. Uh, when I say ask questions, I don't mean ask questions kind of sit around, ignore whatever she's going to say, and then you interrupt and say the thing you really want to say. Because <laughs> you, you could tell the difference, okay? And, and uh, women generally tend to be a little more socially conscious of those things than, than us dudes are. So uh, don't, <laughs> don't do that, but actively listen. You know, ask questions related to things that, that the person is actually telling you to indicate, I'm listening, I hear what you're saying, and I would like you to continue talking about this. I know it doesn't mean that you can never talk about yourself in those contexts, but begin by opening up uh, and listening to, to the other person. So those are just some basic, you know, kind of conversational things uh, related to uh, how, how the dynamics work when you are at some kind of a, a social gathering. Um, when, when you are served food, if you're at a restaurant, always say thank you. Always say please when you are asking for something. Uh, if there is a problem, say, with your order and you are at a restaurant, treat the waiter or waitress just like you would treat anybody that you respect in your life. They are somebody who is providing a, a service to you. And if your you know, steak is overcooked, your waiter or waitress did not overcook your steak anyway. <laughs> that was the cook's job. And that's, that's the person who did it. Don't take that out on your waiter or waitress. If, if you have an issue, there is no problem bringing it up. But bring it up kindly, bring it up respectfully, uh, and, and it's okay. You don't have to be afraid to bring up an issue with your food. I know sometimes people feel like too rude to even say anything. It's okay to say something. Uh, it, it's, it, it's not improper to say if there, if there is some kind of an issue, um, but do it in a way that is respectful, and when they help you, say thank you very much. 
Okay, so always say always say please, always say thank you. This is something that you know we tell our children, but it's true that when I see a lot of adults out, they very often do not do this. And I'll tell you that if you you know thank somebody who even served you at a coffee shop, say before you leave, um, this is a practice that my wife and I always make sure that we do, is that you know if you sit at a coffee shop for a while, uh, we always before we leave go up to the barista who served us and say thank you and then leave. And I'll tell you, people are always, maybe not always, maybe some people don't care. But, <laughs> but oftentimes people just appreciate a little, you know, word of, of thank you because sometimes, especially if somebody's having a hard day, you know, they may not necessarily get those kind of things. It's a little thing you don't really have to think about very much, but it is a way to just show that you are thinking about other people. You're appreciative of uh, the services that, that other people have, uh, have offered to you. Now we can talk about just some very basic rules that, uh, you know, maybe should go unsaid, but aren't necessarily unspoken. <laughs> uh, so if you have a cloth napkin, that thing actually goes on your lap. So yes, put the cloth napkin on your lap. It is there to protect your lap from spills. It is not there for you to, you know, sneeze loudly into it, um, but, but actually put it on your lap. If you drop it, you know, pick it up nicely. Don't make a big scene about it. Um, if you are, if you are somebody who is, you know, practicing proper manners and you notice somebody at your table, say if you're in a public place, if you're uh, at a dinner party where you're with people, especially people that you don't know, but even with people that you do know well, and you see them acting somehow improperly, do not call them out. This is a key part of, of proper etiquette is that you are concerned about you. You control yourself. You don't control other people. Because the focus of etiquette is making sure that you are the one being polite to other people. And when you start using it as a way to judge that people aren't doing things properly, you've missed the entire point. So the worst thing you can do in terms of proper manners is insult what somebody else is doing or correct somebody publicly. You know, even when you're dealing with your own children at a party, uh, it generally is, is best not to make a scene even if your kids are acting improperly. I mean, you can maybe signal to them or do something a little quietly. Um, but generally you don't want to call other people out in front of other people, even if, you know, even if they, they are your kids, not that you can't ever, you know, tell your kids uh, yes or no in public, but, but there is a, a kind of proper ordering of things in terms of when something can be done publicly and exactly what, what should be done in private. Uh, if you are, you know, at a dinner party or if you're eating dinner with somebody, and you, you know, you, ha you have to sneeze. Obviously, if it just kind of comes on there, it's okay to, you know, cover your mouth and sneeze. Um, if you are having like a sneezing or coughing fit, it is proper to get away from the table, stand up, walk away, excuse yourself if there's going to be some kind of issue and, and walk away because nobody wants you sneezing and coughing on, on their food. <laughs> um, something else that you want to do uh, if you if you need something at a party uh, or at a dinner, if you want something across the table, ask someone to pass it. Right? It's rude to stick your arms in front of everybody else and jump on the table and grab whatever it is that 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 you want to grab. No, instead instead ask. You pass generally from left to right around the table. Generally, if somebody asks for salt to be passed, it's proper to pass both salt and pepper just in case they need both or in case anybody else needs both. Um, something else that is considered rude that many people probably don't think about is if someone serves you food and you just immediately dump a bunch of salt on it, you are giving them the impression, you're signaling to them, you don't think that they know how to spice their food properly, so you need to do it for them. This is why you taste your food first. And then once you taste your food, if it really is bland, it doesn't have salt, you can put as much salt and pepper as you want on it. But there is it's an impression that you are giving when you start to just kind of dump salt and pepper on your food without actually tasting it, that you don't trust them to actually have seasoned their food properly. So you're not even going to taste it first. So taste your food. Once you've tasted your food, make sure you do that. Uh, another point that I want to bring up, if you are, if you are seated in somebody greets you. And this can happen in different circumstances. So uh, for example, say you are, you know, out at a restaurant and you happen to, you know, someone that you, that you know happens to walk by and says hello to you. And 
the proper thing to do is to is to greet them. Don't just sit down and shake hands like this and stay sitting while they're standing talking at you. Stand up, meet them at their eye level, and then communicate with them in that way. Um, you know, there are also circumstances in which it would be proper for you to get down to speak to somebody at their eye level. Um, because someone is shorter than you, someone is, you know, it's a kid, someone is in a wheelchair, different reasons. It There are times when it's appropriate for you to meet them at, at their eye level. So uh, it, if you see somebody and you don't want to get up and you're just sitting there kind of awkwardly talking to them at different heights, you're giving the impression that you don't have enough respect for them. You, 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 you aren't even... You don't care enough about their presence that you'll even inconvenience yourself enough enough to stand up and and communicate with them. So uh, there is the end of, of this video. There's a lot more that I wanted to talk about, but I want to see how this does. <laughs> see if you all actually have any interest in doing this. So here are the basic rules of of socializing uh, during a meal. Now. Beyond this, there's plenty else to say about when you use what silverware when and what the different pieces of silverware actually are for because you may go to something where you just don't really understand why you have four different forks or what the point of all the four forks are when you use what. So we can certainly do that. Let me know if you're interested in this. Make sure you subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. God bless.